Tis the season to be jolly. Tra la 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 la. Hey! In celebration of that holiday spirit, we're going to be doing a threesome. And by that, I mean we have three infinite sums, of course. And we're going to evaluate these infinite series using a nice trick from complex analysis. So there's this really cool summation formula that's actually an application of the residue theorem that states that if you have a function f that's meromorphic, by that we mean holomorphic in the complex plane except for a finite number of singularities, and we evaluate the function at integer values k, and we sum those values of the function from k equals negative n to positive n, and we're interested in the limiting case of n going to infinity, which we can write as an infinite series that runs over the set of integers of f of k. Then this sum equals the negative of the sum of the residues of the function pi times cotangent pi z times f of z. And this sum runs over the poles of the function f of z. Bear in mind that we're only evaluating the residues of this function at the poles of the function f of z, not the poles of the function f of z times the cotangent thing. Okay, and if you're interested in a proof of this formula, then I've linked in the description box a PDF file that explains the derivation of this formula quite thoroughly. It's a really well-written piece, so do check that out. And we're going to evaluate first up this sum here that I'm going to call S. So S is the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k squared plus a squared. So we'll define the function f of z to be 1 by z squared plus a squared. And we see that the poles of the function are located at places where the denominator is 0, meaning that we have z equal to plus or minus i times a. And these are simple poles. So the evaluation of residues is pretty straightforward. So we're interested in the residue of f of z times pi times cotangent pi z at z equal to i times a. That would be the limit as z approaches i a of z minus i a times this whole thing which is pi times cotangent pi z divided by z squared plus a squared, which can be factorized as z minus i times a times z plus i times a. So there's some nice cancellation taking place here, and evaluating the limit gives me pi times cotangent i pi a divided by 2i a. Now, the cotangent of i times x means I have the cosine of i x divided by the sine of i x. Now cosine i x equals cosh x and sine i x equals i times the cinch of x. So that means I have 1 by i times, or 1 by i is of course negative i, times the hyperbolic cotangent of x. So that means I have here, pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi times a times negative i here as well. And I have 2i a here, some cancellation once again. So this implies that the residue of f of z times pi times cotangent pi z evaluated at the pole of the function f of z, that is z equal to i times a, equals negative pi times hyperbolic cotangent pi a divided by 2a. Now, what about the other residue? That is the residue of this thing here, evaluated at z equal to negative i a. Well, that's the limit, as z tends to negative i a of z plus i a now, times pi times cotangent pi z divided by z squared plus a squared. And again, we have some cancellation taking place, meaning that we're only left with uh, z 
plus, no, it's z minus i times a. And on evaluating the limit, I'll get pi times cotangent of negative i pi a divided by negative 2 i a. And again, the cotangent function is an odd function, so I have a negative sign out here. And that cancels out quite nicely. And we have pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi a times negative i divided by 2 i a. i's cancel out. And again, we have exactly the same result. It's negative pi times hyperbolic cotangent pi a divided by 2 a. So that's the other residue. And now all we have to do is add up these two residues to get the sum over the integers of 1 by k squared plus a squared. That means we have the negative sign cancels out the existing negative signs, and we're left with pi by a times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi times a. Now that's the sum over all the integers, but if we want to isolate the sum over the positive integers, we could break the sum down. So we have one sum running from negative, negative infinity to negative 1. We have another running from 1 to infinity, and we have this k equal to 0 term. That is 1 by a squared. That equals pi by a times hyperbolic cotangent pi a, which implies that, wait a minute, because we have k squared, it doesn't matter whether the value of k is negative or positive. It means the same thing. So that means these two sums are equal. So this implies that we have two times the target sum s being equal to pi by a times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi a minus 1 by a squared. And all I have to do is multiply. I have to expand by 1 half. OK, cool. So that's the first sum. Now what about the other one, the alternating one? Well, here we have negative 1 to the k divided by k squared plus a squared, again being summed over the set of positive integers. Now for the alternating case, we have another summation formula that requires the same assumptions about the function f. So now we have f of k times negative 1 to the k to make it an alternating series. And we evaluate the sum over all the integers k. And to get the sum, we sum the residues of the function pi times cosecant pi z times f of z. And we evaluate these residues over the poles of f of z. OK, so in this case, we have exactly the same f of z as before. It's 1 by z squared plus a squared. And in this case, we now have the sum over the integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k squared plus a squared. And now we need the residues at, again, the same poles, i times a and negative i times a. So for the residue at z equal to i times a, we have the limit as z approaches i times a of z minus i a times this thing here, pi times cosecant now of pi z divided by z squared plus a squared. So again, we know the cancellation drill. We're left with pi times cosecant of i pi a divided by 2i a, correct? And the cosecant of i times something is the hyperbolic cosecant divided by i. So again, we have i squared downstairs, meaning that we have pi times hyperbolic, negative pi, that is, times hyperbolic cosecant of pi a divided by 2a. And this is exactly the same result for the residue at z equal to negative i a as well. And this implies that the sum, wait a second, did I forget a negative sign there? No, I did not, thankfully. So the sum over the integers k of 1 by k squared plus a squared, uh, the alternating sum that is, negative 1 to the k divided by that thing, equals 
pi by a times the hyperbolic cosecant of pi times a. And again, you can split up the sum like we did before in exactly the same manner. Now, what about the last infinite series? That is the sum over k of 1 by k squared plus a squared squared. Well, we could evaluate this using the same formula that we used earlier, or we could make use of a very similar result, that is the sum over k of 1 by k squared plus a squared. We know that this is pi by 2a times hyperbolic cotangent of pi a minus 1 by 2a squared. And if we differentiate the whole thing with respect to a, that would introduce a k squared plus a squared term in the uh, whole thing squared term in the denominator. And after differentiating and carrying out the necessary algebra, this is what you'll get. That will be pi by 4a cubed times hyperbolic cotangent of pi a plus pi squared by 4a squared times hyperbolic cosecant squared pi a minus 1 by 2a cubed. And I really hope I did not mess up any of the simplification involved. I hope you enjoyed the video. How would you rate this trick on a scale of 1 to 10? And let me know in the comment section if you found some cool solution developments for infinite series using this particular formula. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.